get back to our big supercar test. So far, we've established that my noble is the fastest and the most economical. The most unreliable. Yes, <laughs> And we've also established that the McLaren is the best around town and that Jeremy's big idiotic Lamborghini hasn't actually won anything. No, nothing. Nothing. Zero. Mm. Nil. Zilch. Here. <laughs> Nout. The square root of Jack. <laughs> nothing. We've established that. Let's move on because it's time now for part three in which we three must face the most dangerous thing we've ever done. As we headed north to our date with destiny, we started to think a little bit about how our cars compare to the daddy. Three days ago, if you'd said to me, which would you rather have, an Aventador or a Ferrari 458? And I said, well, the Ferrari, I mean, it's the obvious choice, but now, no, no, I'd have this. And no, a Ferrari 458 is just a technical masterpiece, and it looks wonderful, but this has got something the Ferrari doesn't have. It has, it has a character. It's like a big, daft orange dog. Everybody wants a big, daft orange dog. It's won me over completely. It's not just the best car here. It's better than the Ferrari 458. Me is one of the best cars in the world right now. I absolutely love it. It feels like a race car, but without the impracticality of discomfort. And yes, they're a small make in the UK that nobody's ever heard of. Well, at one time, so was Mr. Pagani making his Zola form. So that's two votes against the Ferrari. But what about James? Oh, this is brilliant. I've really, really grown to like it. And let's not forget, it's £35,000 or so cheaper than the Ferrari 458. And that is a huge amount of money. But there's still, I don't know, the Ferrari, I think the gear change feels a bit crisper. Everything feels a little better defined somehow. It's the fizz, I'm afraid. I can't explain it. I just... The Ferrari still gives me more fizz. You have reached your destination. The destination turned out to be a racetrack called Imola. Where, after a quick change, we were told to report to the pits for a challenge. You will now lap the circuit, attempting to beat the time set by a Ferrari 458. And who's driving the 458? It says here he's not the Stig, but he is the Stig's Italian cousin. It's probably Olga Stig. What's he been doing? of energy left for driving and posted a daunting time of 156.6. Before trying to beat that, we thought it best to spend a little time learning how our cars behaved on a proper racetrack. That gear change in track mode is absolutely savage. I stand here is to get it out of the corners in such a shape that I can use that power. Of course, the McLaren does have a lot of driver aids, but Captain's sense of direction had more important things on his mind. What's this one? I can't remember. Now, this is the bit where I don't have to brake. So I can remember this bit. At the end of the day, we knew the circuit and we knew our cars. But still, we were not feeling even remotely confident, because this is Imola. 
One of the most dangerous tracks on earth. It's narrow, fast, and ringed with unforgiving walls and trees. Gilles Villeneuve, Gerhard Berger, Nelson Pico, Ricardo Patrese, Rubens Barrichello. At some point in history, every corner here has claimed the ego of a big name. And some corners have claimed even more than that. After Senna's death in 1994, changes were made to the track to slow the cars down. But even so, if we were going to beat that Ferrari, we would still be going through the first bend at nearly 200 miles an hour. So that night, each of us spent a little time alone with the cars we'd be using. You are Juventus. And tomorrow, you're taking on Woking Town and Leicester City. And everybody in England is going to want them to win because they're the underdogs. But don't you worry. We haven't won a single challenge yet. But tomorrow, that will change. You're not going into battle armed with sophisticated computer wizardry. Clever suspension. Four-wheel drive. You're just going in with an engine. Doing it the old-fashioned way. Underdog or not, I know you've got it in you now. You got us to win. Just remember, as we're going round, and you're despairing of my terrible gear changes and my bad apexes and things, your mate buying McLaren. You've got the best race pedigree of all these cars. You've got clever suspension. You've got no roll bars. You've got a computer. You can break the wheel for me. You can virtually do it by yourself. All you have to do is humor me a bit and remember that I'm Captain Slow, or Mr. Slowly, as the Italians call me. The next morning, we ventured onto this terrifying track to try and beat the Stig's 156.6. <laughs> taking this challenge very seriously. So 5.4, 4.9. Oh no, I'm still on 207. But we knew we'd have to try even harder if we were going to beat that Ferrari. Right, come on, mate, you blithering idiot. I'm out <laughs> After my brakes had cooled and Hammond had emptied his car of gravel, we went back out for one final attempt to beat the 458. And the Lambo is unleashed! Here we go! Come on! 